Hello YouTube. We're at the helm of my Packer Bell Legend 3540, my Dawson Windows 95 gaming machine. Now, there is something that is a rite of passage, really, for any Packer Bell owner from the mid-90s. And by request of Road Geek here on YouTube, I'm going to take a lesson on using the mouse. Except, I'm not going to use a mouse like this. I'm going to use a trackball. Oh yeah, we're going to be rebels. We're going to beat the system. Yeah, we're going to totally beat the system. So, without further ado, let's boot the machine up. Ah, Windows 95. Now, in order to take a lesson on using the mouse, you need the Navigator CD, which I have burned onto the CDRW. And I'll stick that back in the CD-ROM drive. Time to learn how to use a mouse. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. And that's exactly what we will be doing. <clears throat> now, I don't want to start Windows with this running, so... Alright, here we are. Navigator was a very interesting program back in those days. Because people were not used to graphical user interfaces, they were used to command line interfaces, that's really the way it was in the Windows 3.195 days. It was CLI versus GUI. And this is a one way that Packard Bell tried to make the GUI more familiar with people who had not used a computer before. <clears throat> because I'm sure in the 80s, not because in the 80s not everyone had a had a computer. In the 90s, people were starting the computer was starting to become a household item that everybody owned. So they wanted to make familiarize it and make it as easy for people as possible. So not only did Windows 95 or Microsoft make Windows 95 extremely easy to learn. Packard Bell, and I'm sure, I don't know if any other software companies did this, but <clears throat> they had Navigator, which made things easy for people, and just made things more familiar, because this is a living room setting, and you have something like a clock, stereo speakers, you know, your, you know a stereo itself. And the way this works is you go into different rooms. This is the living room, which is where you have you know, your stereo, your, pa your a Packer Bell box so you can register your product. Um, you get a phone here for the phone answering system, which was included with uh, the sound card of every Packer Bell. It had a sound card and a modem on one card so that it could answer phone calls. I think you could do faxes with it as well. Uh, media controller, speakerphone. Yeah, that was a thing in the 90s was uh, <clears throat> uh, making phone calls and faxing using the computer. That I think for businesses that's turned into things like PBX systems, but back then this was sort of a revolutionary idea for the home. Now what we're going to do here is take a lesson on using the mouse. If I can find out where it is. I think it's over here. Yep. All right, here's the mouse tutorial, except I'm using a trackball. So, rebel, rebel. Here we have the tutorials. And a rite of passage for any Packard Bell user in the mid-90s was to learn how to use the mouse, especially in these days if you had never used the GUI before. You see, in the 70s and 80s, it was mostly command line interface, or CLI is what most people were familiar with from working with DOS, from working with 
all the, the consumer grade computers at the time, like the Commodore 64 um, and the Sinclair Spectrum and, you know, other computers that uh, just used a command line interface. You didn't get a GUI, you just had to know the commands and memorize it or have them written down. With a GUI, it's much more intuitive experience. You can actually interact with it directly and visually instead of having to use linear thought process to get your work done. You could, it, you could just use your normal human senses and, mu and muscle memory to, uh, to learn how to use a computer. And that was the beauty of the GUI coming up into its own in the 90s. Apple had made it marketable in the 80s with the Macintosh and the Apple II GS with GSOS. Uh, but it was only until the 90s, with Windows 3.1 and 95, that the world really started to embrace GUI because it made a really big difference, especially for the marketability of computers. It, made, it meant that anyone could use one. And that's what these tutorials and even Microsoft's uh, sort of hand-holding through Windows 95 uh, really drove home. These tutorials make it a lo made it a lot easier for people coming from the command line interface days of how to use a mouse, what the concepts were, all the rudimentary stuff that you need to know for using a computer. And I don't know, I just think this history is fascinating. So I think we should take a look at using the mouse. Only I'm going to be a rebel and use a trackball. Oh no. So let's check out the mouse tutorial. This is an example of something very rudimentary that people may not have used in the command line interface days. They just simply never had a use for a mouse because everything was DOS commands. So, DOS or Unix commands. Yeah. So, let's take a look at what it was like to learn how to use a mouse. Hi, and welcome to a brief lesson on using your mouse. Now before we begin, remember you can always use your keys on your keyboard to move around. To return to where you were originally, just press the escape key. And to move ahead, press the enter key. If you need help at any time, just press the question mark key. Now we'll introduce you to your mouse and answer some basic questions. Why should I use a mouse? How do I use it? And how do I use the mouse when I'm working with text? To begin with, your mouse is a tool to let your computer know what you want it to do. You use the mouse to point, click, and drag. Go ahead, try moving the mouse. Rest your palm on the round part of the mouse and move it around on the pad. Now you can see how the arrow on the screen mirrors the mouse movement. Now let's practice pointing. Try to move the mouse so the arrow moves over the blue gear. Now let's pause that and just evaluate what we just saw. You see how in the beginning they really catered to these people coming from, from the CLI interface because they said you can use your keyboard to navigate through this tutorial. So they have the fallback there if you don't, if you kind of lose yourself, <laughs> which I'm sure has ha happened to you know more than a few people back in these days. Even though now it seems ludicrous that anyone wouldn't know how to use a mouse. But nonetheless, let's keep going. You click on an object by pressing and quickly releasing the left mouse button while the pointer is over that object. Practice by clicking on the red gear. When you click on an object, it highlights to show you that it's selected and it's ready for the next action you choose. Click on the red gear again to de-highlight or deselect it. Now use the mouse button to click on the forward button on the screen. Let's try double-clicking the mouse by quickly pressing the left mouse button twice. Try it on the green gear. <laughs> I interrupted him. Try it on the... The next green. thing you need to know is dragging with the mouse. You drag an object by pointing to it and holding down the left mouse button while you move the mouse. Practice dragging the gears into place on the blueprint using the mouse. Again, this is more rudimentary stuff that 
is just basic to using a mouse and using a computer in general. This could be helpful for learning how to drag files around from different folders, drag your files onto a floppy or a zip drive or a flash drive, uh, moving your files from one place to another. It's dragging, dragging is one of the most basic important skills that anybody needed to know and still needs to know for using a computer. So it, this seems to cover all the basics you need to know, at least all the fundamentals. It teaches you how to use the mouse. It doesn't teach you, it teaches you what you can do with it. It doesn't really have any application towards the computing portion, but that's not what this is for. This is to teach you the concepts of using the mouse in general and what it's for, why you need to use it, and gets you ready to learn more later on. And let's drag these over here. Using my trackball. When you're working with text, you can use your mouse to tell the software where you want to work. Move the pointer so it's over the word better in the text on the screen. Again, this is more rudimentary stuff, teaching you how to select text which is, I'm sure, one of the most important things people need to learn, especially for work, so that they can work with documents. Notice how the pointer looks like the letter I. This shows you where you'll begin working. They call that the I beam. You can use your mouse to select a word to remove it. Just move the cursor over the word road and double-click the left mouse button. Notice the word is highlighted. Now press the delete or backspace key to remove the word road. You can also highlight a whole line or paragraph. Start at the beginning of what you want to highlight. Hold the left mouse button down while moving the mouse over the first line. Then use your mouse to move the cursor down one line at a time to cover the area you want to highlight. Try it on the sentence on screen. Normally, just like with words, if you press the enter or delete keys, you erase whatever is highlighted. Let's keep going through. Let's try changing the letters in a word using the mouse and keyboard. Position the cursor before the O in Piston and click the left mouse button. Then press and release the backspace key three times to delete the letters T, S, and I. Now type E, R, and S to spell person. Yay, I can use the mouse now. Thanks for learning how to use the mouse to point, click, double click and drag, and to edit text. These skills will come in handy whenever you use your computer. Now to go over any part of this tutorial and practice using your mouse, just click on a topic. Or you can click on the gallery wall button in the upper right area of the control panel to return to the gallery wall. Okay. That is an example of the many tutorials that came with these Packard Bell computers that really familiarized people with how to use them. And I think that was important for both consumers and for professionals. Although I don't think professional, although the Packard Bells were not designed for the professional market. The IBM PS2s were at the time. But the Packard Bells were designed for the consumer market. And in the consumer market, most people went to work, maybe used their IBM 5150 or XT clone or XT itself to do work at their business. So they were familiar with the command line interface. So, not, and I'm sure uh, if they were computer users at home back in those days they would have had a Commodore 64 or something along those lines that did not use a graphical user interface. At least that's what I think was the most common because it was the cheapest option. But when Packard Bell started introducing uh, but when Packard Bell started introducing uh, computers that ran Windows 3.1 and 95, they had to familiarize people with the GUI because Windows 1 and 2 really didn't do all that well, but Windows 3 and 3.1 really kind of came on into their own and really promoted the, made the GUI a viable option for companies, 
for consumers, everybody. The Macintosh made the brought the idea to light, and in the 90s with Windows 3.1 or 95, it really made the idea practical for business and consumer and of course consumer use. So these tutorials, so that's what these tutorials were designed for. They were designed to help people familiarize themselves with the GUI. And for people who had never used a computer before in their life, which I'm sure there were tons of people that had never used one before, this was direly needed for those people. So Packard Bell may have had some uh, nasty DOA problems in the early 90s during the uh, FOT era, but in this era, 1994 through 1998, when they had this stuff going, they were doing very well for themselves. The computers were pretty high quality. They were helping people learn how to use a computer. They introduced a lot of people to computers, and for that, they really should be commended. So that's the reason tutorials like the one that Packard Bell has provided here, for example, existed. They were to help people move from command line interface to GUI and to help people who have never owned a computer in their life learn how to use one and learn like the concepts of a mouse, a keyboard, all of it. Just the whole gambit of things that you need to know for using a computer. And I'd say they did a pretty good job. The GUI has been a extreme success. Has been nothing but success since then. So there you have it, folks. Bass Packer Bell Navigator. And the tutorials on how to use the computer. One of the most fundamental things, using the mouse. But of course, I used a trackball because I'm a rebel. <sighs> Anyhow. Hope you guys enjoyed a bit of computer history there. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.